The Senate Intelligence Committee, in a bipartisan vote, has sent its controversial torture report on CIA interrogations during the Bush administration to President Obama for review and declassification, overriding objections from current CIA Director John Brennan. But in response, former CIA Director Michael Hayden suggested on Fox News Sunday this week that Intelligence Chair Dianne Feinstein was somehow overreacting. Perhaps it's a woman thing? I, um, I read an article by David Ignatius earlier this week, and he said... He's Senator, a columnist for the Washington right. Post. Which and he point. said that Senator Feinstein wanted a report so scathing that it would ensure that an un-American, brutal program of detention and interrogation would never again be considered or permitted. Now, that sentence, that motivation for the report, Chris, may show deep emotional feeling on the part of the senator, but I don't think it leads you to an objective report. Senator Dianne Feinstein joins me now from Capitol Hill. I think and this is your first uh, television response to that comment. Senator, I want to ask you, uh, where do we begin with that? What's your response to Mike Hayden? Well, I'll tell you where we re begin. It's nonsense. It's kind of stereotypical. Uh, I think David Ignatius was incorrect and Hayden is incorrect. Let me give you how this began. It began in 12607 when the New York Times reported that the CIA destroyed evidence, namely videotapes. In December the 11th, Director Hayden appeared before our committee and said he would allow members and or staff to review operational cables, which he said were just as good. Jay Rockefeller was then the chairman of the committee. He, uh, on the 7th of uh, February of 08, uh, he assigned staff on February uh, 27th, the staff reported uh, and presented an interim report to the committee on the destruction of the tapes. The committee agreed to do a full review of the tapes. On March 5th, 2009, the committee voted 14 to 1 to do a comprehensive review of the Detention and Interrogation Committee. Let's have the record crystal clear. I never gave any direction to the staff. I just said we want the facts, and we want those facts footnoted. The one place I did give some direction was with respect to the CIA response to the reports. And I said, you will include their response where appropriate within the text of the report. And where not appropriate, you will note the response in a footnote to the report. And that has been carried on. I believe that when people see the report, and this report has been classified, uh, the 480-page summary and the conclusions uh, have now been voted upon to go for declassification. But Director Hayden, I do not believe, has seen the report. I don't believe most people who are talking about the report have actu actually seen the report. But the genesis of the report was back with the videotapes and back under then um, Chairman Rockefeller, who assigned staff, staff studied the operational cables, came back, reported to us. We took a look at that and said, both sides, we should move ahead and um, do a full study. Now, the full study, again, had a problem because later on, the Attorney General announced that he was going to do uh, an investigation into the deaths of some detainees. Uh, then people who were scheduled for interview, the interviews were made much more difficult. What I want to say, and the Republicans pulled out of the report. Then we were faced with either stopping or continuing just with Democratic staff and the decision was made to continue with Democratic staff. There are 150 interviews and transcripts that were utilized in this report. They are quoted from, they are documented, they are footnoted, and many of them come from the CIA as well as the CIA Inspector General. When are we gonna see the report? Do you have any uh 
timetable of how long it's going to take for the president and his team and the intelligence community to declassify and make that summary public so yeah. we can all judge who's, well, my who's hope fair is, and right. My hope is that it will be a prompt, appropriate, and efficient declassification and that they will lightly redact it uh, because a lot of time has gone by so sources and methods are really not at stake and that people can see this summary also see the conclusions that we came to so you've just made it very clear that this all started under jay rockefeller when he was chair of the committee uh, he is a man <laughs> not given to being emotional, I guess, uh, as you as chair are? I mean, where do we come down in this day and age where a woman who is chair of the Intelligence Committee, because of seniority and expertise and all the rest that goes into that, gets accused of being emotional in having uh, worked on this report well, and, <clears throat> and that, that's, basically I think, an old, backed the staff on this yeah. report? I think that's an all, old male fallback position. And there's no question that there are a lot of people out there. I suspect one of them is former CIA Director Hayden that does not want the report to come out. So one of the things you do is uh, try to blur the reputation of someone connected with the report. Obviously, I'm the chairman of the committee. I'm connected with the report. I support the findings. I believe they're factual. I voted for declassification. I believe that it should we should be transparent and I firmly believe that this report will serve a very positive public good in the long run. We should point out that your Republican counterpart, uh, Saxby Chambliss, also voted for declassification. He had some issues with the content, but he voted to proceed. That's correct. Diane Feinstein, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for being with us.